Sadly, not all monsties are born equal. The weak must be culled and sacrificed to the strong, and the strong will make you a champion. Hello, my fellow riders, hunters, and people. I welcome you as today we go over the five most powerful best monsties to have in Stories 2. And I do mean that literally. We know the final stats of every single monster at level 99, so when it comes to who's got the highest health, who's the fastest, who's the hardest to kill, who's got that biggest, meatiest, largest, offensive stat. Though I should preamble by saying that outside of a few really probably too strong exceptions, I'm looking at you, Bloodbath Diablos, you're gonna die. And we'll get to him. Every monster is pretty much close enough in final stats that combined with all nine gene slots being able to be messed with, you can use literally any monster you like, anyone that you think is your favorite, and you will do absolutely fine. We're talking percents at the end of the day, but they do matter to some of you, and that is no bad thing. I'll be honest, a lot of the time they matter to me too. So, we we have then two very quick honorable mentions. Firstly, Dread Queen Rathian, as one of the best jack of all trade monsters. She has really good speed, health, offense, defense, and she comes with noxious poison. And generally speaking, if you have any kind of status build in mind, you'll probably either be using her or at least using her genes. She's worth keeping an eye on. The other then is Mizutsune, who has the highest water attack in the game at 563. These numbers are all at level 99, so just keep that in mind as I say them throughout the video. He's also uh, the third fastest monster at 284, comes with nice bubbly speed down, evasion up, and generally is quite a tricksy, potent, technical water monster, and honestly a really good recommendation for that six slot. Water kind of needs some better representation. We could really do it like a Namiel or something. In any case, here we go with the five most powerful powerful monsties. The Emperor of Flame himself then, Teostra, kicks us off, and he really does live up to that Emperor title. He has the highest fire attack in the game at 641, he has the tied second highest health in the game at 629, and I should point out that the only monster that has more health than 629 is Gameth at 650, but Gameth really is let down in all her other stats, so yeah, it's an unfortunate outlier. But back to Teostra, not only is he an absolute flaming power powerhouse, he is the king of, as you might imagine, Blast. If you take a base Teostra, give him general fiery goodness, and then give him the blasty goodness from a combination of Basil and a Brachydios, you can essentially have a absolute death dealing machine. Every other turn, triggering a blast explosion for upwards of 1500 damage. I essentially have the build I would have on a Teostra, but on Basil, because I prefer Basil, I'm not a huge fan of how Teostra looks, I'm, I'm okay with him, but he's not my favorite, and I believe believe in using your favorites, mostly, mostly, mostly. And it works exceedingly effective. So yes, for fire, for blast, Teostra is just ridiculous. Next up then is Nergigante, who is the champion of all trades. Not the jack of all trades, the champion of all trades. He is the fastest monster in the game with 315 speed, which is really really weird. He's not exactly known for being fast, but he's outspeeding things like Kirin that can move faster than the eye can see, but that's all good, because he also comes packed with second highest non-elemental attack, 
a ridiculously strong set of defenses in the top five in nearly every category, his health is very respectable, and his self-regen from his Calamity Slash is absolutely brilliant. Generally speaking, he is empirically the most powerful monster you can get before the end of the game, but he is also one of the best base templates to build essentially anything on, because his base stat spread is so powerful across the board. You can really do a lot of things with him, and he is the most, I would say, universally useful monster to have. He is Mr. Versatile, and essentially, if you're thinking, okay, I have a cool build idea, a cool combination of genes to try, and it's not completely ruined by the monster being power attacking focused, well then, Nergigante is probably going to be your best bet to try it on, and that's very, very cool. For example, I have a dragon infused Nergi who absolutely destroys. Then, coming in at number three is Kirin, and this was a close one, Twixt Kirin. Kirin and Rajang. Rajang wins offensively with 641 thunder attack, tied highest attack stat in the game, and that is insane. However, Kirin is not too far behind with 613, and then Kirin does win in every other category, notably speed. Kirin is the fourth fastest monster, and that gives Kirin a big advantage when it comes to being a thunder monster. Because he will generally go first, and because he is incredibly good at applying paralysis, you can essentially cripple and ruin your opponents before they even get a chance to act with an across-the-board paralysis. And that is very useful. So you don't just have a thunder god smiting your foes, you have one completely crippling them constantly, and there's not really much they can do about it. Kirin is absolutely great, and he's honestly not that frail. His health is solid, his defenses are solid, and he will be a worthy ally to have. Coming in at number two, then, is, well, oh, this was difficult. Two and one could easily swap round. They're just very, very different, and it's what you value more. For me, though, for number two, I have gone for Bloodbath Diablos, who essentially exists to absolutely murder the world. He has 641 non-element attack, and yes, that's tied with Teostra's Fire and Rajang's Thunder, the three highest attack stats in game. However, he is non-element, which is honestly easier to build for than any of the elements, which means you can really push him to the extreme. Now, he is a speed monster, which on one hand is nice because it frees up your power slots and he is an incredibly potent speed option, but if he was power, being able to bingo non-elemental and power would make him, I mean, he'd be punching holes in the fabric of reality. As it is, being speed over power is probably what keeps him from being too good, but make no mistake, Bloodbath Diablos is built to destroy, and destroy he will. He is a blood-seeking missile, and your enemies are full of the stuff. I doubt you will see too many out-the-box weird bloodbaths, because he so lends himself to just being what you would expect, incredible at doing big kill, so perhaps in PvP he might not actually see as much use because he'll be quite predictable and PvP is mostly you're going to want to be surprising, having varied monsters that can fill multiple niches at once, keep your opponent guessing, but then again there's nothing technically stopping you using his ridiculous raw stats and going in a quirky direction with him that isn't just pure power non-elemental hits, so the option is certainly there. The point is, his uh, absolute Absolute just raw attack is ridiculous, and he will bring massive damage to any team that has him on. Finally, then, we have Velkana at number one. She is really, really strong. Arguably too strong. I'd say these top two are both arguably too strong. She comes boasting with uh, the tied second highest health in game, along with Bloodbath, Teostra, and Devil Joe, who's not here, though Devil Joe is your best pure dragon choice if you are wondering about that. But in any case, she is very, very healthy. She's also very, very fast, the second fastest monster in the game, and she has the highest ice attack, as you might imagine. So you've got an incredibly offensively powerful, quick and tanky ice monster that is going to 
skill seal the entire enemy team before they know what hit them, and that is her strength. Preventing any special moves, locking down essentially any strategy that relies on anything even remotely complex, and just completely putting your opponents on ice. And that is really, really strong. Skill Seal cannot be underestimated. It is arguably the most potent thing you can do. And in case you don't know what it is, it basically prevents the enemy who's afflicted with Skill Seal from using any yellow moves. You know, any non-specifically tech speed or power. You can't choose to use a special move, you just have to attack normally while you're under skill seal. So it really does completely block a lot of things any given monster's trying to do to you. I think Valkana's pure existence will make the anti-skill seal gene one of the most meta options in PvP. Obviously that's a bold call, the meta hasn't even started to begin to maybe think about developing, but I can see that being definitely a chapter in it. Vilkana is just powerful. She has that skill seal built-in kit that can be supported through various ice genes, and then she's just ludicrously strong as a base template. Her damage is fabulous. She has so much AoE, she is hard to put down, and she has options very much outside of her tech basis. She's also a flyer, which is useful to have out of combat, and she's a very, very pretty, elegant, graceful monsty. She is very, very cool, and yeah, I've certainly got one and will be using her full on because, yeah, it is really, really good to have a Velkana on your team. So, with that said then, as a quick little rundown, now again, this is stories, right? You could mess with all nine gene slots, the stats, and everything. There will be lots of strategies, lots of ways to counter popular ones, lots of ways you can approach combat, especially when it comes to PvP. By no means you need to run out and hatch a team that is just this list, plus one of the honorable mentions, and then you'll never lose. That is the beauty of a game like this. But in terms of just raw strength, in terms of the best monsters, that are best at what they do and out the egg will give you the most potent combat ability Well, it is going to be these five at least until the DLC monsters come along because there is some very very good ones there Technically then if we include my honorable mention of Mizutsune the team of Velkana, Bloodbath Diablos, Kirin, Nergigante, Teostra and Mizutsune has a every element except dragon covered and they have two power two speed two tech and it's arguably the six strongest base monsters in the game so really that's kind of convenient and i wonder if that will be a very common loadout I suppose time will tell. Alright everybody, let me know what you think, and again, look forward to some more specific actual Monsty and Hunter build videos that will be coming your way in the coming weeks. They are going to be very fun and very good for you to try, but how many of these guys were you planning on getting? How many do you already have? How many are you now getting based off what I've just said? I would love to know. But until next time, and like if you enjoyed this, subscribe for more. Please consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below. A good boy. <laughs> Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye